recording. Okay, so this was your guys' homework, was to go through this sheet and to get as much of this done as possible. Now, through conferences, I learned that a bunch of you um, were having some issues, with, and that's totally fine. This looping through lists and comparing lists is very uh, annoying and um, difficult. However, once you understand this and you get how it works, it unlocks the ability to do so many things in your game. Um, you can think of each. Uh, you can think of each bad guy location as all of the attributes you need to have a bad guy. Does that make sense? Currently, the only attribute of our bad guy is X and Y location, which is why towards the end I'm ha I had you guys start doing the image. Right? We're not actually loading the image or anything. It was just a string saying this is the image because once you understand that my x, y coordinate, I can put image in here. I can have health and I can have speed. And that can be my badger. That's all the attributes for my badger. And instead of having minus equals 7 like we did here, um, by subtracting 7 each time, instead of hard coding 7, we type in um, badger 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Badger 4. And you can have different bad guys with different speeds and different images and different, um, different healths. So once you get that, right, once you're able to understand and go, I get it, boom, your game is, your final is going to be a lot easier. Um, which is why I've just been working and working with these um, list. So today is I'm going to go through all of this, answer your guys' questions, and then for those of you who finished this and I gave the the advanced one, or is this the same thing? This is the advanced. Okay, I put it in the same um, file. Um, I'm just going to go through all of this, okay? You guys tracking with me? Yeah. You guys got questions? <laughs> You're like, of course, but we'll wait. I'll wait. Um, I cannot find my code. Oh, there it is. Found it. <laughs> okay. So this is what you guys should have. And I put time.sleep in there uh, just so that it doesn't light, throw everything up. So this is the beginning. I have my badger, and it decreases by 7 each time, and once it gets below 0, it disappears. But now I have what looks like two different badgers going on, now three. So that's getting kind of confusing, right? Okay. So, and I'm actually going to print a space there. So at least we know each individual badger has a space after it. Come on. Okay. What? No, come on. All I Just go to the bottom of the screen. There we go. Sorry, that was weird. Okay. So you guys probably have like a spawn rate of three or whatever. Because in the in the prompt, in the assignment, it's a spawn rate of three. So you can control the spawn rate by either decreasing this um, and having bad timer be three, or you can increase the time in between. You can have that be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the t what the timer does is you can essentially think of it as every 10 seconds or every 3 seconds spawn a new character. And then this goes every, every time you cycle through the code, it subtracts by 1. Now, in my code, it actually is 1 second because I put a second, I put time.sleep here, which pauses the code for 1 second. So every three seconds, I'm going to spawn a new character. 
because I'm decreasing by 1. If I were to change this to 1.5, how many, at what rate would bad guys spawn? If, I, if every three seconds, and I'm decreasing by one and a half seconds, how many, how often will bad guy spawn? No. No. Every three seconds, and I'm counting down by one and a half seconds. Every two. It's not technically seconds, but we're starting out with seconds. So... Normally, if you don't have time.sleep, you loop through this loop like 30 times a second. So in our game, our bad timer is actually 100. And it gets to a point where every two and a half seconds or so, bad guys spawn. Because we decrease that timer. Do you guys understand this timer? If you do not, please raise your hand. This is every three cycles... We're spawning a bad guy, and this is we are decreasing by one cycle. So if this were 35 and we were decreasing by 5, how, how many cycles does it take for us to spawn a bad guy? Seven. Seven, correct. If this was 42 and this was 10, uh, five. Uh, yeah, it'd actually be five. Because it's once it's less than or equal to zero. So if we cycle through four times, this number is still at two. So it'd have to go through a fifth time. So we're gonna Right, you can't cycle through something four point two times. Which is why you need to have the less than, you can't just have it equal to zero. It has to be less than because if you skip over zero on accident. Will a negative number ever be equal to zero? No. So you have to have throw that less than. So again, yeah. that little thing right there will change will determine whether or not your code works at all. You could have everything right and you forget that, and you only ever spawn one bad guy. So, and then once our timer gets to zero, we reset the timer. And you can do fancier math and have the time. If you start this at 100, you can have bad guy equal 100 minus a variable. And so that bad timer, instead of being 100, the next time you use it, it's 10. Then the next time it's 8, then it's 7, then it's 6, then it's 5, then it's, or I'm sorry, it's 100, and then it's 90, then it's 80, then it's 70, then it's 60, then it's 50, then it's 40, and then it's 30, and you keep it at 30. So every second you're having a bad guy as opposed to every three and a half or whatever. Does that make sense? Because we're uh, in our game, we have a timer. And that's like, that's that, like the whole thing. It's like the whole loop, well, for spawning bad guys. For spawning bad guys, you, yes. But you you basically have, have a timer. timer. What? Will we have any other timer? Yes, you'll have a timer that decreases the... Uh, bad timer. So instead of it being 100, it loops and becomes 90. And then, or it's 95 and then 90 and then 8. As the game goes longer, the faster bad guys spawn. So this timer doesn't go on the Nope. The user never sees it. Can you display it? Yes. We're not going to. Okay. You guys good on that? I hope so, because no one said anything. I am out. Okay. So, let me jump over to... So, we have the first one. that We have this section done. You guys should have gotten that done, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, now all we need to do is we need to add a number. Now, notice Stockton had a question earlier. We have Badger 1, Badger 1, Badger 1, and then Badger 1. But you this... 1 at 217, our character is only supposed to move negative 7, so we went from 1 to 217. 
What does that mean? It's a new badger. So this badger got deleted because it was less than zero. And our code says whenever we have a bad guy less than zero, or here it is, we remove it from the list. So we removed that bad guy, that badger from the list. However, when we cycled through again, bad timer was less than or equal to zero, so it created a new bad guy. And then we started delete and then we started moving it. Does that make sense? And then we have a badger here. Notice it's minus seven each time, 17 to 10, 10 to three. Now we have a new badger, badger two. 29. Now we have Badger 1 at 196, which is 7 from 203. Because it didn't. It made a new one because we gotta we gotta have bad guys. We're spawning new bad guys every three seconds, every three cycles. Um, but this is confusing to keep track of your badgers. So I said throw in the index. And now we go, oh, so I have Badger 2, Badger 1, Badger 2. Oh, I have Badger 3, so I have three Badgers on screen running around. The only thing you need to do for that, uh, oh, yeah, I have to show you how to do that. So I need to know the location of Badger. This is where I need to have... <clears throat> This is where I need to type in the index of that badger. So I have bad guys. What's the command to find the index of an ob of an element in a list? Excuse me. You're close. It's not index dot. It's dot index. And what are we finding the index of? We're looking for the index of the of our badger. Yep. Okay, so then we do this, and then all we got to do is copy and paste that. When we run it, uh oh, we we need it. We can't have badger zero. Okay, apparently we have seven badgers on screen, eight badgers on screen. We have 11. So we can't start with zero. How do we fix that? Plus one. Plus one, yep. Um, badger one, badger one, badger one. Badger two, badger three, hang on. This is not what it should be doing. What are we gonna do? Exactly. Oh, it's because I got rid of I forgot to reset the bad timer. So it was appending every time. Once bad timer got less than zero, it was just adding a bad guy. So every time it cycled through, it added a new bad guy. So now, now if we run it, it'll fix it. Badger one, badger one, badger one. Badger one, badger one, badger two, badger two, badger two, badger three, badger three, badger three, badger four, badger four, badger four, badger five. Oh. oh, one must have gotten deleted. Does that make sense? Do you have bad guys dot index badger? Is this right here the same as this thing? What's your type error? What does it say after that? Do you also have brackets around Badger instead of parentheses?
You have parentheses here? Yeah. Hmm. What does it say after type error? What are the... Do you have a plus there? Uh, plus, one. plus one here. Yeah. Do you have parentheses? Well, it's not, it can't be the exact same because if it was the exact same, it would work. So there's got it. There's one little something. Do you have plus signs in front of bad guys or after it? Uh, um, hmm. I'll take a look at that. But I got it. We got to get through because I. I 9.40, it's been 20 minutes, I got 15 minutes and I want to get through all this. So wait, will there not be more than three badgers at a time? No, there'll be more. Okay. Every three cycles you get a new badger. Unless they walk off screen, then they get deleted. So, what's the max? Then? The max is however many your computer can hold. There is no max number of bad guys. You can have it be as ever long as you want. You could have a thousand badgers on screen. The only difference is that your computer is going to run slow. David. Everything works for me except for when it prints it. It's like it prints bad guy zero. Every time it's bad guy zero. Do you have this right here? Yeah, you got to have the plus one. Okay, so now the, nec the next thing is let's see if we can add images to bad guy. What that will do is that allows us to have different types of bad guys appear on screen. We can have ants, we can have gophers, we can have raccoons, we can have badgers. So, if I want my code to randomly select something, what what do you think we should have? R dot choice, yes. Uh, so we need a list of all the images, right? Gopher. So we have badger. Oh, we need badger. Go for and you could be whatever. I just I raccoon. An emu? Yeah, you can have an emu. An eagle? You can. So I'm gonna go bad guy images. So now I have a list of bad guy images in our game. So guys, pay attention real quick. In our game, we won't have a list of strings. We will load in badger is high game dot image. Don't type this up. File path for badger, right? Then we would have gopher be the same thing, but file path for gopher. And then in here, we would have the actual images. We would have the variables. We'd have badger not as a string but as a variable. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's just for right now because we're not importing Pygame and using Pygame at all. We can't have that. So we're faking it by just having some strings. So now we have our bad guy images. Yes. So let's say we all knew everything you just taught us perfectly. Yeah. Completely ready to change the Pygame. Mm hmm. Start it. Mm hmm. I mean, there's a couple things that are like, just copy this. You don't need to know the inner workings of it. Like, the, define the angle between your character and the mouse to then rotate your person. But you, you think that, there's probably a concept you know, right? But I mean, it makes sense, but you don't need to know arc tangent of something. Okay. You just need to know that's how you do it. Yeah. All right, let me, let's, get, let's get through this. So... I have our X coordinate, I have our Y coordinate, now I want the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go rank, uh, R dot choice. I'm going to go bad guy images. So now what that's going to do is it's going to choose a random image to assign to our bad guy. So this is how we get a random ant, raccoon, gopher, or badger. Then I just want to display, and I'm going to copy, because I'm not lazy, I'm efficient, the image, the image of this bad guy, of bad guy, and I'm just going to change these real quick, doesn't, you don't have to, but, is bad guys index badger. Now, if I want the image, 
What needs to go here in my index? What is the index of the image of our bad guy? It is 2. Then if you wanted the health, oops, right, you could use the health. You can have health be index 3, and you can have different types of health for different types of bad guys. Does that make sense? You can have it randomly choose, but you can say if the image is an ant, an ant has one thing of health, but if you have a raccoon, raccoons are tough, they have four hit points. Does that make sense? All you need all you would need to do is you would do like you guys don't have to copy this. You could do image is r dot choice bad guy image and instead of having that you instead of having this here you would have image hey okay, guys guys you guys don't be copying this just I'm running through this as an example right but we would but an image right here is just a choice of the bad guy images as strings what you could then do is go if image equal equal ant health is one elif image equal equal raccoon health is four and then you could do image comma health and that can be that would be your bad guy. You have an image and a health. Does that make sense? Yes, no, maybe so. Sonny? What, what's your question? You don't know? All right, well, we'll practice more. So that is just some extra stuff that you guys will be able to use in your in your game. But for now, we have our image. So now when we run our game, uh-oh, what'd I do? Anyone know what's wrong? My first image, my first bad guy doesn't have an image. It just has an x and y coordinate. So I would do, I'm hard coding my first bad guy to always be a badger. So now I have bad guy one, badger, badger. Now I have an ant, a badger, a badger, another badger, a gopher, gopher, a raccoon, raccoon, raccoon. Does that make sense? Uh, David. Uh, well, how does, like, the first print end until the end of the end? Like, you have to end Okay. So now, this is the harder part. Peter, did you finish this? The arrow part? <laughs> the what part? Did you do the arrow? Um, the part where you... Where the arrows collide? No, that wasn't on the assignment. Was it? I finished the entire assignment. That was given. You have the badger and the arrow collided? I do not remember that being on the assignment. So oh. All right. Well, then pay attention because that's the next thing. And I have like six minutes. So hopefully we can get through it. So for bad guy and badgers. So why did I have it up there? That doesn't really matter. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is I need to cycle through the arrows and see if any of the arrows touch any of the bad guys. Make sense? I have to code and see, I've shot this arrow. Does this arrow touch any of the badgers? No, that arrow doesn't, but does this arrow? Does this arrow? Does that arrow? Just stop shooting arrows. 
bolts. <laughs> I'm not shooting arrows. I'm the bunny. I gotta protect my brood or whatever the word is for a group of bunnies by shooting arrows at attacking badgers. So what I need to do is is essentially I'm going to do the same thing I did with badgers. I'm just going to do it with my arrows list. So I don't have an arrows list up here. So from the assignment, I think I gave you a list of arrows. Yeah. I'm looking at the assignment and there's no arrows stuff on there. Did you grab the updated one? There is an updated one that I gave uh, to people who already finished it. I thought I emailed it to you. But regardless, it's okay if you didn't. No, I received no email. All right, whatever. No big deal. But then just start paying attention. Because <laughs> I know you haven't haven't been or have been. You've been doing something else back there. I could have been you, yeah. So, I'm going to do something very similar with our for loop for our arrows as, as we do our badgers. So, here is my list of arrows that I just, this is a random snapshot. When we build our game, we will, we will append arrows every time we click. But for now, we're just assuming there's arrows in flight, right? Because we can't build our whole game um, right now. So I will just, you can copy this and paste it here and then indent it. Instead of four badger in bad guys, I'm going to do four arrow in arrows. I'm going to change X location of arrow. Can you like individual arrows or arrow arrows? Just like individual. You can use it whatever. And I mean you could change this to quiver. The thing that holds arrows. Okay. So quiver for every arrow in my quiver. I'm changing arrow and I'm just going through and I'm renaming this should be quiver sorry oh wait do I have an image for my arrows I do but do my arrows ever change no so we actually don't need that line at all So all I've done is I've gone through this loop and I've changed quiver, I've changed bad guys to quiver, arrow or badger to arrow. That's all I've done in these two in these three lines. This is in the for loop. Oh. So I have four badgers and bad guys, and inside of that I have four arrow and quiver. So for every bad guy, we're going to loop through every arrow. So we're, what we're saying is, Mikey, are any arrows touching you right now? No. Stockton, are any of my arrows going are hitting you? No. And I'm going through every single bad guy, and I'm checking, does any of my arrows... Yeah. Have any of the arrows I've shot that are currently on screen the same location as this badger? Is it the most efficient? Probably not. But that's what we're going to do. That's how we're coding this. doesn't have to be exactly the same. Yeah, but for now, it's exact. Once we build our game, we actually have a rectangle around our arrow and a rectangle around our badger. And if any point of any of the rectangle overlap, uh, we delete it. Okay, so um, we'll finish this Monday. So that's it. Have a good one. No homework. Have a good weekend. Thank you.